Max from Maxine's Little Nook and today we are reading Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher is a fantasy standalone, an adult fantasy standalone, and we follow the story of Mara, who is the youngest sister of three daughters of a kingdom, and Mara is a princess. We'll start off with a non-spoiler review. So T. King Fisher writes um, about a girl named Mara who is out to kill the prince who is currently married to her sister. She then seeks help from a powerful witch and it's basically a journey for them to kind of, you know, save her sister and basically save the kingdom. If you're into like um, old fairy tales type um, of stories, you would you would really enjoy this because um, T. King Fisher does touch on like, you know, fairy godmothers, uh, witches, and demons. It's a lot more dark though. It's kind of like a grim dark type of fairy tale, which is absolutely if you're if you're into that, then I, I would highly recommend this book. It is quite short. It's about 319 pages long. There is a good amount of character development, but there's not much world building. I would say that it's because it's too character driven that the author maybe kind of thought that it doesn't need to have such a strong world building part but the plot and the characters do carry the whole story to the end which is absolutely great i'm the type of person who loves a lot of world building so it, it was a little bit hard for me to kind of i wish they would describe things more like the magic system but we have really good characters really funny characters that you just it's an it's a very enjoyable read i personally think that i wish there was more about it or more to it when it comes to the magic system and stuff, but it's fine. Like, it's a good, nice, short read that you can enjoy in a day. Personally, it's four stars for me, but yeah, if you like grim, dark type of fairy tale with a lot of ghouls and fairy godmothers and demons stuck in a chicken, you will absolutely enjoy Nettle and Bone. So a little bit of the spoilery review. I honestly didn't like the main character. <laughs> I like the side characters more. The thing is, right, right, we start off with Mara being a, like, being in that blister lands and trying to get a dog to kind of come back to life. And then it's because, but it, that's like the present. And then we go to a flashback where Mara was a kid. And it does state that Mara, Mara was a slow kid. And then uh, she had a sister, an eldest sister named Damia and her second sister who is older than her, uh, Kanya. And Kanya always hated her. And that's what is in the narrative here. Like in Mar when Mara, Mara was reminiscing, so that Kanya always hated her and Kanya didn't like her. And Kanya always kind of, you know, just doesn't want her. And the fact that in the, the the plot, the main reason why she wants to kill the prince is again, yeah. Uh, so initially, the prince married Damia, which which is the who is the eldest daughter, and then she came back dead because we don't know what reasons why she what the reason for her death was. The prince marries the second daughter, Kanya, and then she falls pregnant. She then gives birth to the child, but the child then dies. And then throughout that, uh, a couple of years, while Mara was in the the convent, because of course she was in the convent, she became a nun, well, like a nun in training. Kanya constantly falls pregnant. It's because for Kanya, she then discovers, Mara discovers that Kanya, for her to not get beaten up by her husband, she has to constantly be pregnant. And for Mara, that is absolutely appalling. And I mean, for anyone, that is absolutely appalling. And then she then seeks to kind of kill the prince to save Kanya. But yeah, like absolutely fine, fair enough. That's okay, motivation, sure. It is quite, a, for me, I think I'm not used to having such a personal motivation for a character. Maybe like sometimes I like, you know, you read a, read a fantasy book, it's always like to save the world save this to save the kingdom this is just basically i need to kill this dude because that's my family she's he's hurting so fair enough personal vendetta type of thing cool then we go to the mara story of when she was as soon as her sister got married she then was sent to a convent by her mother which which was under the order of the prince so her she won't have any heirs and like she'll be celibate for a few years before uh, while they are waiting for an heir to the throne 
for the prince and Kanya. I really enjoyed the story of Mara in the convent. Was how, how humble she is compared to like her humble livings compared to her princess life and how she be became friends with the sister apothecary and then they go out and she suddenly becomes a midwife. In total, Mara spent 15 years in the convent. So by this time, she was already 30. Mara then kind of found the birthing aspect. Like, cause it, funny enough, this book talks about birth too many times. And it is good though. Cause like the way that, that Mara was talking about pregnancies and giving birth, it is kind of, it's like a curse or a gruesome way. Her meaning and her her reason why she, she does not like her sister is because, you know, how every time a mother gives birth, um, one foot's already in the grave kind of thing. It's, it, it for Mara, that is absolutely true because she has witnessed so many births and so many stillbirths and then so many births where the mother has passed away. I think that there's a specific bit of this book that was quite nice, um, you know, like really telling. One of my favorite lines in this book is, uh, the history of the world was written in women's wombs and women's blood. Which is, yes, <laughs> yes, a hundred percent yes. And the sad thing is, like, you, if you realize right now, like, yeah, nobody mentions the women who sacrifices their lives to have heirs for thrones, for, for you know, leaders, for for heroes. You like, anyway. That was a very powerful line for me and I really love that bit in the book. After she then finds out that her sister was constantly pregnant and then the reason why she was trying to be pregnant most of the time for that 15 years is because her husband doesn't hurt her. She then had this resolve that she needs to kill the prince. One thing I think is because of Kanya, because her sister's getting beaten up, and also because of Damia, which is um, her eldest sister who was first initially married to the king but who then died. She then sets off to this journey to find a curse or a spell to kill the prince. She gets advice from um, a dust wife who is local to her area to go to somewhere far west of the country to find a very powerful dust wife. And then she does. She goes there, she does. And then that, du that, that specific dust wife uh, who's the powerful one then gives her three impossible tasks where we are where we find ourselves in the beginning of the book where she one she tries to using her owl cloak which is made out of nettles um, she then goes into the blister land and try to make a dog out of bones and her last um, task impossible task was to capture a moon the moonlight in a jar which technically she does and doesn't do but yeah, um, the dust wife then was convinced that, okay, if you want to kill the prince, I have to go with you because this is a dangerous job. Through that journey, they then encounter Fenris, which is a knight who has committed crimes in his kingdom and tried to kind of kill himself off by sleeping in a fairy circle. And then the fairies found him and then imprisoned him. And then Mara and the witch, well, I call her the witch, but the dust wife uh, sets him free and then he then tags along in this journey. And then the third person that they encounter is Mara's personal godmother, a fairy godmother, technically. That felt like a blur to me because somehow like all the, all the whole questing and stuff, like they went in circles because they went from Mara's king. You start off at Mara's kingdom. She goes down to find the dust wife. She meets Fenris, who is a unnecessary lover. And then she then goes back to her kingdom to get the, the god, fairy godmother. And then they head off to the prince's kingdom, which we visit that a couple of times in the beginning of the book. I just feel like it's not enough conversations about the world. There's not much emotional connection between Mara and her sister for them to, for her to be actually that motivated to kill the prince. I'd say it's because, you know, it is a short, book it is a, a standalone that and usually standalones have that fallbacks of you know not enough time to actually set up a good connection between characters and the main character but i gotta say i did enjoy the final chapters just because of the saving grace of the fairy godmother having banters and conversations with the dust wife it's literally like like good like the light and dark trying to kind of outwit each other but being best friends that's the best part of the book to this book's credit the fact that they don't explain much of the magic system and much of the the background of you know the goblin market and stuff like that 
it become it becomes to the point that they say it so nonchalantly that you don't need to you're never told what it is you're never explained what it is it's just there and i like that fact because as like mara you're the reader uh you don't know anything about this until the dustwife just shows you and then you're at the same kind of emotional level as mara like okay uh, i just have to accept this I just have to accept that this woman um, summoned a, a drowned boy from the river and now this disgusting thing is trying to talk to me. That's the bit of the, the humor and the world building, well, what lack of world building comes together and makes this book quite a good, good read is because the very minimal explanation or the lack of explanation for things like the way that the dustwife talks about it to you as a reader uh, to the reader and to Mara uh, it's just how it is like example um, I think Mara was curious about because uh, the dustwife walks around with a staff and then there was a there's a red hen oh no a brown hen on top of her staff and Mara asks like why do you bring the the hen with you and then she said oh because there's a demon in her and then Mara was like is there really a demon in your hen in your chicken and then she's like you, know, you always put a demon in a hen you don't put it give him give him to a rooster that's how you get basilisk kind of thing it's so nonchalant that it it sounds fun in a way and I guess like if you want a sit easy sit down read of fantasy absolutely go for it because it's just you don't have to overthink things you just here you go here's your cup of tea and then just deal with it like it that's not the point the characters are the point the the magic and whatever the background is it, that's just noise just go for it and go for the story which i i absolutely like i understand it's just that maybe because i i read a, a very in-depth high fantasy story going from that to this it kind of ruins my not ruins but like alters my expectations for books but yeah, like that's not that is absolutely not this book's fault. It's just my current read has gone from this and it's hard to get to find a book that'll meet that. But yeah, this was very relaxing coming into the fall season, so it was quite nice to read outside. Yeah, that's my review of Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. Um it's a good read, a nice enough read that you can sit down on the couch while it's cozy and you know just have a have a cup of tea and read nettle and bone it's quite a nice uh relaxing read where you don't have to overthink things and i absolutely recommend for me personally i give this a four star just because i was just maybe if i reread this in the future i would probably give it another a different rating but yeah hope you enjoy this video thank you so much for the 80 people that have subscribed to my channel oh my god but yeah um if you like this video please uh click that like button subscribe for more and uh let's hang out in the comments and yeah see you again next time bye